Imagine a world in which a single encounter can start a violent rivalry and devotion turns fatal. This is the terrifying truth of Mick Howie's life, not a work of fiction. However, who would have the audacity to murder Australia's most notorious biker boss? Watch closely as we solve this riddle. Mick Howie Born in Beirut, Lebanon on May 9, 1980, Mahmoud Howie and his family sought safety in Sydney, Australia from the chaos caused by the Lebanese Civil War. With this move, Howie started a trajectory that would eventually take him to the top of the Comanchero, one of Australia's most infamous outlaw motorcycle groups. Howie grew up in the suburbs of Sydney, where he regarded his upbringing as modest yet boring. He was well known for his large, robust stature at Punchbowl Boys High School. Although his early years appeared normal, a storm was building underneath. Howie's life changed dramatically in 1999 when he joined the Comanchero Motorcycle Club at the age of 19. He put himself on a collision course with fate with this decision. When William Jock Ross created the Comanchero in 1968, it was first a fraternity for motorcycle riders who felt rejected by society. But under Ross's direction, it developed into a group that was closely associated with illegal activity such as drug trafficking and bloody turf conflicts. Howie established himself as the club's leader right away with his commanding presence and captivating personality. Howie's ambition and thirst for power culminated in a daring and ruthless act in 2002. He organized a group of younger members to overthrow Ross. Howie and his friends gave Ross a thorough crushing, taking possession of his Harley Davidson and club colors. This was more than just an attempt to seize power. Howie took over as the new national president and supreme commander of the Comanchero. The Comanchero increased their operations and engaged in more illegal activity when he was in charge. Howie's combination of ruthlessness and charisma throughout his reign won him both enemies and allegiance. On March 22, 2009, the Comanchero and Hells Angels clashed violently at Sydney Airport. This horrific confrontation not only claimed the life of Anthony Zervis, but it also thrust Howie into the dangerous national spotlight. On that day, both Howie and Derek Wainohu, the Hells Angels Australian national president, happened to be on the same flight from Melbourne to Sydney. Words were exchanged during the flight, and by the time they landed, both leaders had texted their gang members, calling for backup at the airport. What ensued was a public and savage battle, shocking bystanders and security personnel alike. The fight was brutal and unrelenting. Gang members used metal bollards, meant for crowd control, as weapons, turning the airport terminal into a battleground. Amidst the chaos, Anthony Zervas, the brother of a Hells Angel member, was viciously beaten and ultimately lost his life. This public display of violence shattered the image of bikey gangs as mere rebellious outcasts and exposed the dangerous reality of their existence. Law authorities had Howie right in their sights because of his role in the altercation and Zervis's subsequent death. In addition to his involvement in the airport incident, he rose to prominence in Australia as a symbol of the growing threat posed by outlaw motorcycle gangs. The tragedy changed the face of organized crime in Australia by sparking a national crackdown on bikey groups. Two years after the infamous airport fight, in 2011, Howie was confronted with the full weight of the law. Anthony Zervis's murder was the charge against him, and he was found guilty. The trial was a well-publicized case that attracted a lot of media coverage and public interest. Law enforcement celebrated Howie's conviction as a major win in the ongoing war against organized crime and violence by biker gangs. This triumph, though, was fleeting. In 2014, there was a significant reversal of Howie's murder conviction. The evidence used in the trial was deemed insufficient by the New South Wales Court of Criminal Appeal to support the murder conviction. The public and legal community were taken aback by this ruling, 
which called into question how well the legal system handles organized crime. After his murder conviction was overturned, Howie and the Crown worked out a plea agreement. On the lesser allegation of manslaughter in connection with Zervis's death, he entered a guilty plea. Howie's tactical choice to enter this plea helped him avoid facing the murder charge again, but it was a choice that would follow him around for the rest of his life. He received a sentence that included a maximum term of six years and two months, as well as a three-year and six-month non-parole period. The difficulties and complexity involved in prosecuting prominent members of organized crime were brought to light by Howie's conviction and the subsequent dismissal of his murder accusation. His story came to represent the continuous conflict between the police and the criminal motorcycle gangs. It also emphasized how arbitrary the legal system is, with decisions often depending on how evidence is interpreted and technicalities. On February 15, 2018, Howie was gunned murdered in broad daylight, putting a devastating end to his chaotic life. The day was like any other for Howie, who had tried to keep a low profile since being released from prison. He went to the Fitness First Gym in Rockdale, a suburb of Sydney, for his normal workout. Unbeknownst to him, it would be his final. As Howie returned to his car, a gunman approached and fired multiple close-range rounds, wounding him in the head and body. The onslaught was savage and precise, leaving no opportunity for survival. Bystanders and rescue personnel were racing to Howie's aid as the murder scene descended into chaos. The extent of his injuries was too severe for them to handle. After being taken to St. George Hospital in severe condition, Howie passed away from his wounds, leaving a violent and contentious legacy. The murder of Howie was the subject of a thorough inquiry. Important evidence was provided by local CCTV cameras, but the gunman's identity remained a mystery. There were several theories on the assassination's motivation. Was it a case of competing gangs exacting revenge, internal bikey politics, or something more intimate? Yusuf Nazlioglu, a former close friend and associate of Mick Howie, emerged as the main suspect in the intricate network of theories and suspects that characterized the inquiry into his assassination. Their formerly close relationship had soured over what appeared to be a minor incident during a fishing excursion. Following their falling out, there were rumors that Nazlioglu, feeling betrayed and degraded, may have sought the ultimate retribution. But the issue remained. Were there more sinister, deeper forces at work here, or was this just a simple case of personal betrayal? In the months following of the incident, theories abound. There were conjectures that the homicide stemmed from internal conflict within the Comanchero organization. Rivals may have boiled beneath the surface due to power vacuums caused by Howie's leadership and subsequent exit from the team. Others wondered if rival gangs might have been involved, considering Howie's past and the Comanchero's tense connections with other biker factions. The world of biker politics is notoriously opaque and nuanced, making it challenging to identify a single incentive or offender. The real mastermind behind Howie's murder remained elusive despite protracted police investigations, a plethora of interviews, and the examination of CCTV material. With every explanation regarding the case being equally credible, it was a maze of possible reasons and suspects. The public and law enforcement were left with unanswered questions as a result of the lack of clear proof and definitive leads, which further served to deepen the mystery. The death of Mick Howie brought attention to the chaotic and often dangerous realm of criminal motorcycle gangs. It emphasized the fact that loyalty can mean the difference between life and death in this murky underworld and that alliances are brittle. His murder remains unsolved, posing a gloomy reminder of the lawlessness and unpredictability of gang disputes to those who seek justice and closure. The real mastermind behind Howie's murder is still unknown despite in-depth investigations and prosecutions. Was it a gang feud? an internal power struggle within the Comancheros, or an act of revenge from a former friend. What do you believe to be the true reason behind the murder of Mick Howie? 
post your ideas in the comments section below.